Since the last episode, I've been doing a bit of this, some of this, and lots, and lots, and lots of this. Remember back in episodes 9 and 10, I calculated how much land the village would need under cultivation each season in order to be viable? And I translated that to chunks, 586, and started plowing and planting. Recently, I filled all the land I had set aside for this and realized I was 162 chunks short. So I needed to find new land. I couldn't go onto this side of this river. That's the 586 chunks needed for the next season. Remember, there are two planting seasons per year. So instead, I expanded over the other side of this river, which makes sense. Some of this land will definitely be under the care of a village household, but the rest of it would be worked by the people from the farmstead. To tend these fields, I need a bridge. There's a ford on the other side of the farmstead, but it's really just for access to a small field, so build we must. I could have gone with a stone bridge, there are plenty of surviving medieval examples around, but I wanted something that would use some of that wood I harvested back when the castle hill was cleared. So I looked for examples. There are none extant that I could find. Plenty of bases of support posts preserved in silt and mud at the bottom of rivers, but not much else. So where to turn? Manuscripts. Eventually I found a couple of examples. I quite like this one from the Chronique de France Saint-Denis. It's French and a little late, 14th century, but would bridge construction be suddenly radical? Maybe, maybe not. So I've used this as inspiration, but with support placements based on archeological finds in Leicester and Suffolk in England, which date back to the 11th and 12th centuries respectively. I could have made a simple trestle bridge, it would be spot on, but I wanted to do this instead. I may yet change it. So with the bridge built, our farming households can get back to doing this. And this. And I'll look. This. I think my brain has melted. And that's it. The last seed in the last field for the castle. Oh, I had to plough and plant 586 chunks in order to support the village and the farmstead. This is 593. It's seven more than I needed, but it was easier just to do 12 chunks here than five chunks here. And that's it, it's done. Oh, that has been such a chore. I have done 105 chunks this week. Oh, I'm so over plowing and planting. I never want to plow and plant ever, 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 ever again. Well, I say that, but I will at some point. But in order to have enough fields to support the village and farmstead and the castle and for the villagers to be able to pay their tithe, I have had to plough and plant every available spot in the basin where I've got the castle. I really thought I wouldn't have to. I thought I could get to the river over there and that would be fine but then I had to do this side of the river which I suppose is fair enough because we've got the homestead there and I've had to come down into the valley. I do still have a little bit of space left, although all this here and heading out around that village is really marshy. And by that, I mean it's full of random ponds. I mean, there's one there. I've filled in quite a few here, but there's a lot more around there. There's a lot, whoops, sorry horse. There's a lot over there. There are holes, there are chasms. The land gets really awful and really hard to fix. That said, I did do a bit of fixing. I did, 
I didn't flatten things out. Oh, that bit was flat. I evened things out so we got gently rolling hills instead of gently rolling hill damn great hole. <laughs> but I now have a problem. I have had to plow and plant so far out that I have come up against this village. I never thought I would come up against this village. I thought that village would always stay safely out of render distance, but it hasn't. And honestly, I don't want to, nor do I have the space to plow and plant another 586 chunks to support that village. So that village is gonna go. Destroying the village is a purely Minecraft decision. I do not want to plow and plant even more fields to support this place. And there's another village just out of view which would present the same problem. But did villages disappear in the medieval era? A bit, but not as much as you'd think. And before you say, but Draymer the Black Death, that didn't take out villages in significant numbers. Not so that the village site and all its buildings were abandoned, and there were other factors at play. There were a lot of villages emptied and raised in England, don't get me wrong, but they tended to be later than our castle. So why were villages destroyed or abandoned? Auburn in Holderness was deserted because the land it was on was eroded by the sea. The areas surrounding Esk became increasingly marshy to the point where farming wasn't possible. The residents of Hundatora up on Dartmoor had to leave as rainfall reduced and even a subsistence existence became impossible. And then there's Dunwich in East Anglia, which is basically underwater these days. Severe storms and a shifting coastline did for it. Bit hard to maintain your trading status when your harbour has silted up and even your river mouth has moved to the next town along. But climate was not the main story. The main story of why villages were destroyed is greed. As the social system shifted from feudalism to capitalism, landholders ceased to be held by or even to see any sense of obligation to their tenants. If more money could be made by running sheep, then the villagers in the way had to go. Because it's not just the village, it's the huge expanse of cultivated land needed to sustain it. And sheep will earn you more with less bother. You've no doubt heard of the Highland Clearances, where whole areas in Scotland were emptied of people to run sheep and make the landlords rich. The reason the clearances were so successful is because the upper classes already had a lot of experience in England itself. The East Riding of Yorkshire seems to have been particularly hard hit. This got underway in the 14th century, but really gained momentum over the next two to three centuries. And of course, there are the villages that were raised to the ground to make way for deer parks and ornamental gardens, such as East Mafton and Kirby. As to me, it's not a question of greed, but of time and space. I don't have the time to plough and plant any more land. I don't really have the space for it in this basin. And honestly, I'm really, really tired of making fields. emeralds. We must never have checked in here. Now it's getting worrying. Yeah, go on, down you go. Yay! Oh. I thought he'd never leave. And like that, the village is gone. I have left a couple of floors in because there should be some indication that it was here. Some foundations, some crop fields, the remains of a village square. 
archaeologists will be able to work out that something was here at some point. That said though, oh, I don't want to look over there. What's he carrying? Oh. That said though, that was a very Minecraft decision. Not making me nervous. That was a very Minecraft decision, not a history decision. Shivers! Run! Run! I hate Endermen! Rat! Yeah, you come and get me. Oh, you come and get me. Oh... He's going to keep coming. Oh, where is he? Oh. All right, he's de-aggroed, but he's still here. I'm going to aggro him again. try to get rid of him. Oh, he's going crazy. I really, really, really want him gone. Oh, I really, really, really got him gone. Oh. <laughs> I can't even remember what I was saying now. Oh. Right, think again. That was a Minecraft decision, not a history decision. Because I just do not have the time, the stamina, or the space to plow and plant any more fields. So they're just gone. Look, they're already wandering off. I don't know what's going to happen to them. I assume when night falls, they'll get zombified or something, or I don't know. I don't think they despawn, do they? I might come and check on them in the next few days, see what's happening. <gasps> But wow, I am ploughed and planted out. I am now... Oh, I've got pins and needles in my hands now. Thank you, Enderman. I'm going back up to the castle. I'm going to start getting things together so that I really can work on the Outer Bailey next time. <laughs> I can't even think of a code phrase. Now that I've had a chance to breathe, if you've made it this far, put the code word in in the comments onward and I will see you up at the castle next time. Bye!